Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our third lesson on radio and electronic theory. We're going to talk about the antiquated nav aid, the automatic direction finder. Uh, you already have a useless flag or useless stamp on the title page, so you know this is gonna be extra exciting, but I do need to cover it, so let's get started. The aircraft equipment, and the ADF, there's a receiver and bearing indicator in the airplane. And I'm not really being fair to this because this is like super old. This is like a 1950s units. They do have more modern units, but they're still pretty, pretty old. There's a non-directional beacon, an NDB on the ground. And this is a simple AM radio tower. You could make an NDB at home with a simple electronics kit. It would be, if you're somewhat savvy with electronics, uh, like a high school student could actually make this. Uh, it's that simple. Now, obviously it's higher powered than what you would have in a simple electronics kit, but you get the idea. This is, a, this is probably the most modern looking ADF equipment that you can get, even though this is probably still 20 or maybe 30 years old. So to tune and identify the ADF, you're going to tune the frequency and listen to the Morse code. So here, let's take a look. Here's the NDB in Thunder Bay. Now this one's kind of hard to find because at first I couldn't find it. It was like, where's the frequency? It's actually down here. Okay, QT, 332 is the frequency. Now you might be saying, hey, that's awfully close to my AM radio. Uh, yes, actually, indeed it is. Your, uh, your ADF will actually, if you listen on the, on the audio feature, will pick up AM radio stations and you can actually listen to AM radio on that uh, instrument. Uh, so the serviceability check is pretty basic. You just look, does it point where it's supposed to point? So let's talk about how to use this antiquated piece of equipment. The key thing to remember is that the ADF is heading sensitive, not position sensitive. So you remember the VOR was position sensitive. The ADF, it's all about where you're heading and not where you are. So we talk about a bearing to station. The bearing to the station is the relative bearing plus the magnetic heading. In a nutshell, so what you do is, let's take a look at this diagram. Here's magnetic north, okay. We're flying a certain heading. And then relative bearing, that is what the ADF is going to indicate on the dial. So in this case, it might read 210, okay. So if we think we're traveling heading 030, and the relative bearing is about 210, we add it together. This bearing to station, so this right here, the bearing, that's going to be like 240, okay? Now I'm just gonna go real briefly into how to use these things because it, it can get a bit tricky if you're tracking bearings inbound and outbound, and it's way beyond what a, a private pilot needs to know. Uh, I, don't, I personally don't think anyone should need to know it because it's so old now, but you definitely, I, I, you don't need to know it as a private pilot. Generally speaking, you tune up the radio and point the arrow up. So that means your relative bearing zero, meaning your bearing to station and your magnetic heading are the same. So you're heading straight for the NDB. And then what you do is correct for wind. So let's take a look here on the right side. That's what we did. We pointed straight towards this NDB right here. Okay, now the wind blew us to a bit to the north. We'll just call this north, northwest technically. So now our relative bearing is indicating 10 degrees to the right. So we want to get back on our course. So what we do is we turn to the right and we turn to the right until let's say our relative bearing is going to be off for a bit. And this is where kind of the mental math comes in. So we're going to fly this. We've turned 10 degrees to the right. Our arrow is pointing directly to the NDB. And then what we're going to do is we get on track and we're going to take out, let's say half of our correction. So even though we're flying zero, the relative bearing uh, here, we're going to turn so that the relative bearing is 10 degrees to the left or 350 and we're turned 
10 degrees right to intercept or to keep on the um, keep on the track and correct for wind. So if this seems a bit confusing, yeah, it is it is a bit confusing, but you'll get the hang of it um, if you practice this. You might fly, you might do this during your commercial license, but I don't even know how many training aircraft still have this equipment on it because it is it is quite old. And if it is installed, it's probably not even working because nobody fixes them or very few people make them anymore. Well, I was unaware that the ADF has a voice feature, but it does. Um, and I guess it works the same way as if you tune up an AM radio station. So if your airplane has a ADF, just tune up a uh, AM radio station just for fun and see how it works. And then actually I should mention too, you can tune it up and it will actually work. The needle, if you point the needle, it'll actually fly you to that antenna where that AM uh, radio station is propagating from. Remember that the ADF is heading sensitive, not position sensitive, and the bearing to station is the magnetic heading plus the relative bearing. The major advantage of the ADF over the VOR is uh, A, ease of use, B, lower cost, C, longer range, D, lighter weight. So I didn't cover this specifically, but if you recall from our first lesson on radio theory, we talked about LF and MF uh, frequency bands. And so the ADF operates on these LF, uh, low frequency and medium frequency bands. And those bands bounce off the ionosphere. And so you're going to end up with longer range. A ADF and a VO, uh, ADF you could use for close to transatlantic flying, uh, as long as you have a powerful enough uh, non-directional beacon and you, can, you could follow that right across the ocean. You are heading 330 and the relative bearing is 030. The bearing to the station is, so remember, bearing to station is the heading plus the relative bearing. So 330 and 030 add up to 360. So that's north, 000. So A is the correct answer. You are heading 270 and the relative bearing is 000. After 10 minutes of flying, the relative bearing is now 005. You're quite a fine pilot and can rule out any inaccuracy in your heading control. What is happening? So let's draw this out, make life easy for us. So we're heading 270. Okay, and our relative bearing is 000. So that means that's straight ahead. So let's change colors here. So hopefully this makes sense. Our relative bearing is 000 because it's straight ahead, 270. After 10 minutes of flying, the relative bearing is now 005. So it means it's to the right of us. So that means we are like right here. 005. So we have a crosswind from the right. So B is the correct answer. Uh, there's no change to the Earth's magnetic flux lines. No, there's no instrument error. We're going to call it a crosswind from the right. So let's figure out what we're going to do. So same question, but what do we do? So we're going to fly uh, double the, the wind, the drift. So it's five degrees. So we're going to turn to the right, 10 degrees. So fly heading 280. Okay, so if we fly 280, just think about what the relative bearing will be. And then when we're back on course, the relative bearing will be 355. And then we're going to fly a heading of uh, 275, so five degrees in. Correct answer is B.